This is the second video session in a series on the Advanced Installation Meter, or AIM, and will cover basic meter usage in most applications for an installer. While there are a number of signal level meters available, and they may have served us well over the years, none were designed specifically for the frequencies we use, our installation procedures, and the challenges we face as a professional DirecTV installer technician. The AIM was designed by DirecTV engineers and is manufactured for DirecTV technicians like you. This meter will save you time and help you deliver the highest quality signals possible to every receiver you install. If you haven't already set your AIM up, you need to view the first AIM video session or follow the initial setup steps in the AIM quick start guide before going any farther. I also recommend you have an AIM user's manual like this available so you have instant access to the operation and features and will have it close at hand in the field. If you don't have an AIM user's guide, you can go online to satinstalltraining.com, click on the meter updates tab here, then click on AIM user's manual here and print yourself a copy for reference. This information is password protected. If you don't have a login, ask your supervisor, or you can click on the contact tab and follow the instructions to get login information. With your meter fully charged and set up, let's look at how it should be used in a typical installation activity. Unlike other meters you may have used in the past, the AIM allows you to store information about the task you perform for the installation and records associated with the account number. To enter the account number and other vital information, first you need to turn the meter on. This is done by pressing the power button here and holding it until the meter comes on. From the home screen, press setup to go to the modified job setup screen. Then press select to go to the account number screen. Enter the account number for the installation using the number keys and press enter or OK. You'll also need to enter the ODU type. Arrow down to ODU type, press select, then arrow up or down to the ODU you'll be installing, then press select again. It's very important that you select the actual ODU you'll be installing. If you're installing an SL5 using a SWIM 8 or SWIM 16, don't select an SL5S. The ODU and switch information has to be correct. The AIM knows if the ODU you selected requires a switch and will show you the options for that particular ODU. If the installation you're doing will require a switch, select the type of switch you'll be using, then press select. Remember, standalone SWIM means SWIM 8 or SWIM 16. Next, you'll need to enter the zip code of the address you'll be installing. Arrow down to zip code, press select, and using the number keys, enter the zip code, and press enter, then select done to return to the home screen. The zip code is very important since it will be used to determine the signal strength for your area during installation verification. These settings become default settings you'll need to change from job to job. With the job set up in your AIM, you're ready to start the install. As with all DirecTV installations, a site survey is first conducted to determine where the ODU should be mounted so it will have an unobstructed view to all satellites. The first screen you'll see when you select install on the meter shows the zip code you entered in setup, the type of ODU you'll be installing, and the azimuth, elevation, and tilt you'll need to receive those satellites. These rough settings should be initially used and preset during the assembly and mounting process of the ODU. Once you've assembled and mounted the ODU in the best location, the AIM guides you through the steps for aligning and performing follow-up extended installation verification. Let's see how that's done.
The steps required for aligning an ODU vary depending on the type of ODU. All ODUs require course adjustments be made in azimuth and elevation, and the 95 degree ODU used for DirecTV International programming also requires an adjustment in tilt. To make your course alignment, move the ODU adjustments in the appropriate direction while using the aim to determine the position where the ODU receives the maximum signal. Slimline ODUs require fine adjustments or what we call dithering in both azimuth and elevation to hone in and receive the maximum signal power. That's because slimline ODUs are not only receiving signals from multiple satellite orbital slots, they're receiving both KA and KU band signals. The KA band is much narrower than the KU, and fine tuning is critical to receive the best possible signal from all satellites and orbital slots. Here's how you align and dither a slimline ODU using the AIM. After you've assembled and installed the ODU according to the DirecTV procedures, Connect the AIMS ODU F connector to the ODU L and B output. Turn the meter on. When you're in the home screen, press install and you'll get the pre-configure ODU screen. Press next on the pre-configure ODU screen. If the installation includes two ODUs, the select ODU screen appears. We'll be aligning the slim line, so we press select. You'll now be able to perform the coarse azimuth alignment. Here's how. While monitoring the signal on the coarse azimuth and elevation adjustment screen, slowly rotate the ODU on the mast to the left and right until you have reached the maximum signal. It's important to keep in mind that all LMBs are different. Some will peak around minus 30, while others will peak around minus 25. Once you've reached maximum signal level, lock down the mounting bracket collar on the mast. With the azimuth alignment completed, you can perform the course elevation adjustment. First, loosen the ODU elevation lockdown screws. While monitoring the signal power bar on the course azimuth and elevation adjustment screen, rotate the ODU in the elevation direction until the aim indicates it's locked on the signal and maximum signal power is reached. You might need to alternate between the coarse elevation adjustment and the coarse azimuth adjustment to get the maximum signal strength. Once you've gotten the maximum signal, tighten elevation lockdown screws then press next on the aim to continue. Next we need to perform the tilt adjustment. Loosen the ODU's tilt lockdown screws. While monitoring the DBM bar on the tilt adjustment screen, slowly rotate the ODU around the tilt axis until the maximum DBM value is reached. Tighten the tilt lockdown screws, then press next to continue. For three LNB ODUs only, the verify azimuth and elevation screen appears following the tilt adjustment to ensure the azimuth and elevation are still properly aligned. To perform the fine elevation adjustment for slimline ODUs, first loosen the ODU elevation lockdown screws. Turn the ODU's elevation jack screw counterclockwise two turns. A full turn is indicated by one full rotation of the dial from zero to zero. Fractions of a turn can be counted by using the numbers on the dial. On the Fine Elevation Adjustment screen, press Set Reference to set the reference value. The AIM sounds a confirmation tone and displays the reference value. In some cases, the meter will ask you for another turn when dithering. This means that you're not far enough down from the peak. Once you've achieved a confirmation tone, zero out the readout dial on the Elevation Jack screw. Now turn the elevation jacks group clockwise slowly while counting the turns until the meter begins to sound a series of beeps. This indicates the reference value is within 1 dB. 
Continue turning until the meter sounds a confirmation tone and the signal power matches the reference value. Refer to the ODU's dial and enter the number of turns it took to return to the reference value, then press OK. Zero out the readout dial on the elevation jack screw. By using the number appearing on the AIM screen, turn the elevation jack screw counterclockwise that number of turns. Now tighten the elevation lockdown screws. And press OK, then next to continue. To perform the fine azimuth adjustment on the slimline ODU, loosen the ODU's azimuth lockdown screws, then turn the ODU's azimuth jack screw counterclockwise two turns. On the fine azimuth adjustment screen, press set reference to set the reference value. The aim sounds a confirmation tone and displays the reference value. Zero out the readout dial on the azimuth jack screw. Now slowly turn the azimuth jack screw clockwise while counting the turns until the meter begins to sound a series of beeps. Again, this indicates the reference value is within 1 dB. Continue turning until the meter sounds a confirmation tone and the signal power matches the reference value. It should take around four turns to reach the reference value. Again, refer to the ODU dial and use the AIM's numeric keypad to enter the number of turns it took to return to the reference value, then press OK. Zero out the readout dial on the azimuth jack screw. Turn the azimuth jack screw counterclockwise the number of turns indicated on the screen. Tighten the azimuth lockdown screws, then press OK, and then Next to continue. When you've completed the alignment process for the ODU, the EIV and ODU screen appears on your aim. To perform the EIV for the ODU you just aligned, on the EIV at ODU screen, press Run EIV and wait for the results. Make sure you review all the results for all orbital slots and swim channels required for this installation. A satisfactory result is indicated by a check mark and a problem indicated by an X. If an X appears in any orbital slot, press Repeat EIV to confirm the problem. If X appears again for one or more orbital slots, press EIV Detail to determine which test failed. Press Next to view the details for another orbital slot, or press Back to scroll back through the details to the EIV at ODU Results screen. When you finish reviewing the EIV results on the Results screen, you can press Done to return to the Home screen. EIV can be performed at any point in the installation to ensure the signals at that location meet the minimum threshold value specified by DirecTV Engineering. Keep in mind you can pass EIV and still have potential problems within the system. The AIM guides you through the steps for the testing. To perform the extended installation verification, start the job for the installation like we did in setting up a job earlier. From the home screen, Press EIV to go to the EIV configuration screen. Use up or down arrows to highlight the equipment configuration for the installation and press select to go to the EIV location screen. Use left and right arrows to position the image of the AIM under the location where you're testing. Connect the AIM ODU F connector at the location in the distribution network where you want to test. Then press Next to go to the EIV screen. You have the ability to add notes here if you want, 
by selecting the Notes option. Here you can note details like where the EIV is being performed in the system. To run the test, press Run EIV and wait for the results. On the EIV results screen, review the results of all required orbital slots and swim channels if applicable. A satisfactory result is indicated by a check mark, a problem is indicated by an X. If you have an inconclusive result, it's indicated by a dash. If an X or dash appears for an orbital slot, perform the following steps. Press repeat EIV to confirm the problem. If X or dash appears again for one or more orbital slots, press EIV detail to determine which test failed. Troubleshoot any failures following standard troubleshooting procedures. If you'd like to perform EIV for another location, you can press EIV from the home screen and select your configuration and select another location in the system to run EIV. When you finish reviewing EIV results on the EIV results screen, press Done to return to the home screen. You can repeat the EIV as many times as necessary to quickly track down and correct any installation problems you might have. The AIM has other features that will help you troubleshoot on service calls and help you find problems with existing systems quickly and easily. We'll cover some of those in the troubleshooting using the AIM video, the next in this series. The AIM was designed by DirecTV engineers specifically for DirecTV technicians like you. Use it and trust it. Once you're familiar with it, you'll see that the AIM is not just another signal level meter.